Hello and welcome to this tech tip series with me, Rory, from Hyper Production. And today I'm here with Sonic Academy giving you a tech tip about Match EQ. So Match EQ is a equalizer within Logic Pro X and it allows you to basically mimic a EQ curve from another element which you then you can apply onto your other element that you're putting it on and you can basically flip the EQ curve so they kind of like fit in together like a jigsaw. So that's probably easily explained by what I'm going to show you now. So we've got this little D&B track up here. However, I've got this lead there and I've got this pad that aren't quite sitting together nicely. Like They kind of sound like they're fighting for space a little bit and it just sounds a little bit muddy. So I kind of want to clear that up a little bit. So this is without the match EQ and I'll just play it through. Okay, so then we've got the pad there and the leads. Let's listen to those two isolated. So this is with the match EQ on. So you could just hear them each, or that lead especially, just sitting on top of that pad because we've got that match EQ on. So, And also that reverb's kind of cutting through the mix a little bit better as well, down to the match EQ. So let's start this again. I'm going to click no plugin on there, and we're going to open up another instance of the EQ. Now the only other plugin on the market that I know that does this really well is the new Pro-Q2 um, from FabFilter. So you're able to match EQ by that. But within Logic Pro 10, we have one built in, which is great. So this is the match EQ here. So it's gonna show you a current curve of what just basically on this track. Then when you click on the side chain to then select what other element you want to EQ against, it will then start showing that within the reference toggle there as well. And then obviously you click match to match that EQ curve. So. Let's select our pad. Now the great thing is with the new or the later updates, I think it came in 10.3 with Logic Pro 10, is the ability to actually use match EQ against MIDI instruments as well. Like you weren't able to do that, but now you are. So if you look at the bottom here, we've got instances and instruments of basically MIDI, whereas before you could only do it on an input or an audio track, so that's great. So what we're going to do now is just play through this. You're going to see the EQ curve from the lead, and then we're going to click reference, and it's going to start listening to the pad. Okay, so there you can see that it's actually captured the EQ curve of that pad. So obviously when the lead synth wasn't playing and the pad sort of swelled in, you could see that the waveform within this sort of visual spectrum analyzer was starting to engage. So you're probably wondering, well that's all well and good because it's actually adding a lot of the frequencies there. So it sounds even more built up now if we listen to it. So that's basically copying the EQ curve of the pad. So the magic with this is that we need to flip it round using this dial here. So when we drag this down, it's actually going to flip it over just like that. Now, the art with this is that you don't want to be too abrasive with it. You don't want to make it seem too obvious. You want to be quite subtle with it. So it might be quite tempting to think that if you drag it all the way down, it's going to fit in perfectly when it's not because you can see a huge spike here where it's going to be adding a lot of high end and you're cutting out a lot of the mids as well. So it's actually going to start sounding a bit dull. So what we want to do is actually just dial it back a little bit. But what we can do is actually change around with the smoothing. Now what the smoothing dial down here does is actually sort of really nitpicks into the individual frequencies, which you'll see in a minute. So it relates to these curves here. Okay, so then if we click smoothing that way, it's going to go even smoother. But then if we dial it back, you can see it going even more in depth with the curve. So that is great. Now we basically have the EQ curve flipped over from the pad onto our lead, and this is what it sounds like.
Now that, for instance, is a perfect example of what I've just mentioned. That is probably a bit too much because we're actually changing the tonality of our lead a bit too much. So what we're going to do is just dial this back a little bit. And we're just going to take out some of these highs. So you can actually click and drag on these and you can actually pull down certain frequencies. So if you're like this is, if it's a bit too top endy, you can always just dial it back a little bit, which is great. So let's have a listen to that now. And then without the match EQ. Okay, so let's listen to that in the mix. Okay, great. So it doesn't only just work for synths. There's another use that I've got for this within this little project here as well, and that's actually our percussion track going against our snare. So you can see on this track here, we've got a match EQ. Now, if I turn that off and we just listen to the drums, then I'll solo the percussion snare. It just sounds like on the hit of the snare, they're just trying to fight for space a little bit, even though the percussion actually sounds a little bit pan to the left. But what I've done is actually added a match EQ going against the snare. And basically, it just kind of hits that little bit better, just makes the snare cut through the mix a little bit more. And it just subsides a lot of the bad frequencies coming out of the percussion as well. So let's have a listen to that. So it just helps support that snare and make sure that cuts through the mix. And it just obviously sounds like it subsides a lot of the sort of clashing bits from the percussion loops. And then we end up with this. Okay, and that is how you use match EQ. So if you do that on a lot of mid rangey type stuff, it can really help clear up your mids and make way for vocals and things like that. So if you've got a lead vocal in a track as well, you can actually get all your synths and percussion and whatever, match EQ it lightly to your vocal, and you'll notice that your vocal will really cut through the mix a lot better. But obviously you can use it against leads and stuff like that. It's a really powerful, helpful tool. So definitely recommend using it. So I've been Rory from Hard Production. You've been watching Sonic Academy Tech Tips and I shall see you on another video. Thanks everybody for watching, commenting and indeed liking. We really do appreciate all the support we get here on our Sonic Academy YouTube channel. So if you find this video super useful, please, we'd love you to hit the subscribe button. We update the uh, YouTube channel every week with new content. And if you want to watch some more relevant content, just click on the videos beside me.